1996, Kobe Bryant of the Los Angeles Lakers was the youngest player to ever play in an NBA game. The confidence and attitude showed in a player who was determined to become one of the best players in the NBA. His athleticism translated to his highlight reels being dominated by dunks, and this became a key identity for him as a young player. There were moments when he showed glimpses of his outside game and his three-point shooting, but it was not enough to capture the imagination of NBA fans or analysts. His ability to read plays boosted his budding defensive skills. Naturally, it played a part in his fast-break highlight plays, delighting fans and his teammates. In this sequence, we see Kobe block the shot as Eddie Jones gains control of the ball. Kobe then initiates a showtime play by running down the court for an alley-oop. Depending on who you ask, the alley-oop from Nick Van Axel to Kobe was pure poetry. The Kobe versus Michael Jordan comparisons were going to be a thing in the future. We just did not know it yet. However, Kobe's game showed it from the athleticism to the tongue sticking out as he flew towards the hoop for a dunk. But overall, Kobe's rookie season was not a standout one statistically. The one-on-one -on -one highlights and the crowd-pleasing dunks continued. The defensive plays and easy points showed us glimpses of what he was to become in future. According to Bleacher Report's Aknef Ahmed, Bryant's most forgettable season might be his rookie year. The only bright moment was when Kobe won the slam dunk contest that year. The 1997 NBA slam dunk contest was the moment Kobe earned his reputation as a high flyer and a fan favorite. So our winner is Kobe Bryant. Later in his rookie season, in a playoff game against the Utah Jazz, Bryant shot an air ball in the closing minutes of the game. The game went into overtime and Kobe had air balls on three different three-pointers. This was arguably the lowest point of Kobe's on-court career that transformed him into the player we came to know. The Kobe Bryant that had no fear to take the big three-point shot when needed in a game. It was a vicious Kobe, a version that was ready to let the fans know that he now had the cajones to hit the big shots on his way to being a five-time NBA champion. This is not to say that Kobe's three-point shooting is anywhere close to the level of Stephen Curry who is probably the greatest three-point shooter of all time. In fact, towards the end of his career, it was evident that Kobe respected Curry's three-point shooting. Oh, from the other county, and Kobe slaps him on the behind and gives him a smile and says, that's good shooting, kid. Kobe all over Steph, Steph said, wait a minute here, take this. The three-point shot is recognized in a contest during the NBA All-Star Weekend. In this contest, participants attempt to make as many three-point field goals as possible from five positions behind the three-point arc in one minute. NBA-related sports debates will regularly bring up the three-point shot with analysis into its validity or efficiency. Players either get castigated or praised for their efforts behind the three-point line. And offensively, in order to do all that, he's shooting the three more often and better than ever before. He's shooting six, seven threes a game, and he's hitting them 37, 38, maybe 40% of the time after last 6. night. 39.6. 39.6, he grounded up to 40, it's 40. 40% of the time shooting six, seven threes a game. The three-point shot will either bring joy or total agony to your team. In this sequence, Jeremy Lamb presented heartbreak to the Toronto Raptors fans.
They're going to look at this for sure. Good golly, Miss Molly! He did it! This crowd is done. Jeremy Lamb, the shot of a lifetime! In this sequence, the Washington Wizards are down five points to the New Jersey Nets with 12.1 seconds left in the game. Beal will pull up for three. He hits it. 35 for Beal, two-point game. Matthews with a steal. Here's Westbrook for three. He hits it. Wizards up by one. In a span of 7.8 seconds, the Wizards find themselves up by one. Did I just see that, J.K.? Are you kidding me? Talk about a turn of events. Down by five, and they score six. The three-point shot is the single most influential play a team can have, but sometimes it leads to comical results, as we can see from Nick Young and Kemba Walker. Sex and chocolate. <laughs> And the rebounder Richardson, still an opportunity with a minute to play. It's closing time. Oh no. The 1992 NBA Finals. Tonight, game one between the Portland Trailblazers and the Chicago Bulls. Jordan was not known to be a great three-point shooter, but in this game, he made six three-pointers in the first half alone, which tied a finals record for threes in a half, set by Michael Cooper in 1987 and tied Bill Lambeer in 1990. The record stood for 18 years until Ray Allen broke Jordan's record in Game 2 of the 2010 Finals with seven first-half three-pointers. An NBA record most points in a half in an NBA championship series. In 1995, in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference semifinals, Indiana Pacers star Reggie Miller stunned the New York Knicks with one of the greatest closing acts in NBA history. Underway. With his team trailing 105-99 with less than 20 seconds remaining, Miller took over. Game that's seen nearly 60 fouls called. Actually, that is short of the record for both teams in the playoff game. Miller for three, and he got it. Reggie Miller with a clutch tray, and it's 105-102. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line. The Pacers and Reggie score eight points in 18. And the Pacers pull out an amazing performance. In Game 4 of the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals, Miller was able to drain a game-winning three-pointer against the Chicago Bulls. In Game 6 of the 2013 NBA Finals, Ray Allen did not hesitate and drained the game time three with 5.2 seconds left on the clock. Never has an NBA championship turned so significantly on a four second sequence. The irony being that Miami Heat fans had started leaving the arena. In addition, the yellow rope for the Spurs trophy presentation had been placed around the court before Allen made the shot. Enormous. And Mike, Tim Duncan out of the game leads to the second shot and clearly a three-point shot. They confirmed that it was a three. In Game 5 of the 2019 Western Conference first round playoffs, Damian Lillard hit one of the most devastating three-point shots over Paul George of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Lillard, long range three, and it's good! At the buzzer, Damian Lillard, are you kidding me? With the magnitude of a nuclear bomb, this shot rocked the foundations of the Thunder, and the team was never the same after this. Lillard waved goodbye to the bench, silencing a series worth of trash talk with a shot that George later referred to as a bad shot.
The first time Portland fans witnessed a shot like this from Lillard was in 2014, during the first round playoffs versus the Houston Rockets, with Lillard leading the Blazers to a series win. And while Lillard shot five years later sent Portland fans into euphoria, years ago they were once on the receiving end too, thanks to Kobe Bryant. Way more enjoyable watching it than having it happen to you, I promise you that. Wow. In 2004, on the final game day of the NBA regular season, Kobe knocked down two clutch three-pointers to help the Lakers escape Portland with a crucial double overtime victory. Bryant out top against Patterson. Kobe cannot get Patterson in the air. A wild three. After Kobe hit the second three-pointer to win the game, the Portland TV announcers were left in stunned silence. Payton to inbound. Bryant for three. In 2003, Kobe had already settled into the role of taking the three-point shot. In a game versus the Seattle Supersonics, Kobe made what was then an NBA record 12 three-pointers in a regular season game. This could have been a moment when Kobe wanted to show that the air balls at Utah were now a thing of the past. It took 13 years for Kobe's three-point record to be broken by Steph Curry, and in 2018, the Golden State Warriors' Clay Thompson became the current record holder with 14 three-pointers in a single regular season game. By Kobe Bryant establishing a new NBA record and of course he is our player of the game. It became more and more common for Kobe to have the ball in the final seconds of the game and be the one to hit the go-ahead three-pointer or the game-winning three-pointer for the Lakers. Does what he does. Elevates and splash. For this buzzer versus the Sacramento Kings, Kobe has less than an eighth of a second to get his shot off. From the replay, we can see how Kobe pushes off from his initial defender who is looking for a foul call. Lamar Odom of the Lakers also runs off in celebration even before the ball goes in. Most players from this angle, we can see how little time Kobe had to release his shot before the clock runs out. Up, 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 is it out of his hand? Yes. Barely. That is as close as you can Paul Westfall, the Sacramento Kings coach, can only look at Kobe's feet to hope he steps out of bounds. He knows it's the only way to change what is coming next. Once again, let's look at the timing of Kobe's shot release. Still over there reviewing it. Has to be out completely. Cannot be touching any part of his hand or finger. It's out. One tenth of a second. Wow. You know what else? You look at his feet on the sideline. That heel is so close to being out of bounds as well. Talk about everything working in your favor. Plus, it's an unguarded look for the best player in the game. When Kobe hits this go-ahead three, one of his former teammates, Trevor Ariza, is on the opposing bench. <laughs> you can briefly see Ariza smile as if he knew what was coming when Kobe had the ball in his hands. It's going in that one, definitely down the pipe. Did you see Trevor Reese's reaction on the Trevor, bench? Trevor knows. Yeah, Trevor knew. Trevor, Trevor knew he was going to take it, and he knew it was going to go down. It's not a surprise to anybody that in the league. That was a great angle. That was a great, because Trevor was smiling in the corner and just knew it was going to go down. In 2013, Kobe pushed his Lakers to the playoffs in the second half of the season. In a game versus the Toronto Raptors, Kobe demonstrated his will to win by hitting three straight clutch three-pointers. In trouble, four stop, To Kobe making this ridiculous double head fake from behind the arc, and then just elevate and knock it down. Not eat. Lakers down, in trouble, quickly. Bryant, three from the corner. Yes! Kobe's second clutch three came off a fantastic no look pass from Steve Nash. I mean, just catching fire, and I mean, nothing but bottom. For the final clutch three, Kobe makes his way around the Raptors defenders who already know that he is the one going to take the shot. 
Kobe zigs and zags past two defenders, then fakes the shot getting rid of one defender, then makes the clutch three over the second one. Kobe wanted these moments more than anyone else on his team and his determination sent the game to overtime where the Lakers eventually beat the Raptors. Fans at Staples Center had become accustomed to seeing this and these Kobe moments were what they came to watch whenever the Lakers played. Let's the one guy fly by one more time. Look at the movement without the ball. Just catch, square himself up and I mean just drained the three. He was almost out of bounds. He was so deep. 15 points in the fourth quarter as that rainbows through. Kobe made his Olympic basketball debut at Beijing in 2008. By then, he was only known as a three-time NBA champion. He had just come off an MVP winning season, but he had lost in the NBA Finals to the Boston Celtics. By the time he represented Team USA in 2012, he was a five-time NBA champion, a Lakers legend, and one of the most famous sports icons at the Olympic Village. Kobe's three-point shooting was part of his scoring in a system where he was not necessarily supposed to carry the team's offensive burden. Kobe was only about a year away from a season-ending Achilles injury while playing for the Lakers. After returning from the Achilles injury, a torn rotator cuff would signal more wear and tear on his body. The clock was ticking down on Kobe's career, and the 2012 Olympics gold medal, his second after Beijing 2008, would mark Kobe's final basketball triumph. The final year of Kobe's career saw his general offensive game and three-point shooting get worse. The air balls were back, and the three-point shots were no longer falling consistently. For Lakers fans, he was not the killer they had come to know on the court. For Kobe haters, this was a version they loved to see and make fun of. It was like watching the 1997 Kobe play in Utah, game after game after game. However, as with everything in life, there is always something to smile about eventually. Come on. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even you have to smile on that one. For Kobe's final game on April 13th, 2016, no one knew what to expect. The occasion was a celebration and a tribute to one of the greatest NBA players of all time, from ordinary fans to A-list celebrities. Staples Center was buzzing and the venue was ready to send one of its heroes into the retirement that he had announced in November the previous year. Fans had witnessed Kobe's highs and lows, his struggles on the court and off the court problems. No matter how long they rallied behind him, one thing was evident, Father Time remained undefeated. As the game went on, Staples Center started to feel that this night would be different. Kobe went out shooting, literally. 50 total shots in the game, 21 of them were three-point shots, of only which six went in. And the fans loved it. They were getting the show they paid to see. Stepped underneath in his comfort zone. Baseball umpires and his brother Jerry. Out of his 1,346 games, so just under a third. Hits the three! 35! On the farewell night for Kobe, putting on a show. What, and I, I gotta let everybody in on your story. I think he's going to seeking Kobe for three. Yes. See, he said, "Hey, Yubi, I heard the three for 16. I'm just going to keep you quiet over there." A 40-point game for the 122nd time, for the first time since November of 2014. Kobe. And so many incredible moments during his 20-year career. This is right up there with him. Jordan didn't do it against the Bulls. 
Bryant here. Hits another three. 43. But there was no bigger three-point shot Kobe made that night than this one. On his way. It's a one-point game. He's so tired he can barely take his feet up. Look at him. That guy, look at him. He's just slugging along and all of a sudden he's rare stuff and fighting on it. It's like, oh wow, still got a minute and something to go. And actually, actually. A minute to play. Bryant for the lead. Yes! Kobe Bryant gives the Lakers the lead. <laughs> and while that was not a three point shot, it was a go ahead bucket in the clutch. This is what Kobe did best. This is the Kobe fans had come to watch and love over the years. The long deuce. He's got 58. And the good news is the Lakers have a chance at the final shot because the Game clock is at yeah. 31. The irony of this game is that Kobe's final play was an assist to Jordan Claxon. Most likely a final nod to all the people who criticized Kobe by saying he did not pass the ball. And how about his final game being against the Utah Jazz, the team where his three-point shooting story began way back in 1997. As Kobe stepped off the court in his final game, he had achieved everything possible in his career. This was the night that he left basketball on the floor in a game where he gave his all one final time. Kobe did not leave the NBA as one of the greatest three-point shooters the game has ever seen. But hopefully you will now think, yeah, Kobe was actually a good three-point shooter. And Kobe Bryant's final memory for us is a 60-point game over the Utah Jazz. Bryant to the basket, inside! Oh, what a finish for Bryant! Good ah! 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 the run, Toby on the reverse! Well, you let him turn the corner and try to get it down low. Picked off. Here's Bryant flipping over the head. Walk behind the back. Oh, it's stuck! What a play by the Lakers! Standing ovation here at Staples. And the loose ball. Look, he's got it. Double. That's the reverse. 92-77. They're on their feet at Staples. Five out Hornets. Kobe showing a little bit of the young Kobe. <laughs> Pop off. Kobe, pop it a little bit. Ball bounces right to you, and he puts on a show. Entertain me a little bit. Let me see it again. We're going to break. I got time. Leaving it on. Kobe on the reverse. Do you believe this guy? <laughs> he never saw it. Back to the basket. He knows where it is. What a play by Kobe again. Spectacular. Lakers by 25. Utah came back to down last year. He took the double team, split it behind his back on a spin. Oh, and the slam. He'll go to the line. Look at the play. The crowd was on their feet. Look at that. With behind the back, the spin. Nice play. And then the three point opportunity coming to Roni Turiyak. Kobe, show me some footwork. Showtime. 360, 107, 100 Lakers. What a defensive play in the last two minutes. Randolph tried to slip him at home. Wow. Get it out of here. Mason guards Kobe. Four second difference. Three and a three. Good. Kobe and three. High out. Spurs. Go to the other night and play through it. Good point. Battier yeah. watching Kobe. Scooping. Driving and putting it in. Oh, that was a, that was a oh, 
inside. Oh, what a finish from Kobe Bryant. And a foul. Throws it down in the face of Paul Millsap. Well, oh, absolutely. There's, there was a time where this guy would try to get 50 tonight, and his team would have a chance of winning. But they're at their best, and he's making plays. Wow! And speaker making plays, Brian banks it in, off balance, falling down. Shot clock at six. Brian for three. Puts it in! Kobe Bryant from downtown, and the Lakers regain the lead. Look at the determination on his face. J.R. Smith caught with his hands down. Talk about closer, no question about it. Great play by Bryant. Kobe will take it in and throw it down on Paul. Bryant, yes. Oh. And that was a little tough to Alvin Gentry. That insult to injury, Kobe. I mean, what a shot. I mean, you can't defend that. Are you kidding me? On a spin, what a pivot. Yes! <laughs> a standing ovation at Madison Square Garden for some of the most. As Kobe Bryant has 61 points. He's picked up the dribble. Kobe Bryant, 32,000 points in his career. And he gets a free throw for the end one. 107, 102. 16, 13, and two and a half. Oh, 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 no. The Mamba still has venom in those veins. Bryant for the win at the buzzer. He is hard to believe. No, he's not. Amazing again at the buzzer. Ahead of the field, LeBron tries to chase them. <laughs> Came up short. How many times have we seen that with LeBron James as a steel white? This is my ball. man. This is my man. This is no Showboat. Doubt. We call him Showboat, but y'all know him as Kobe Bryant. This is my main man. I feel like a father, though. I mean, this is my <laughs> boy. I mean, we play together. We sit on the bench by each other. We're always talking. Then when I look at you know how you go down in, in the locker room and they, they, they list everybody's age, not the age, but their date of birth, mm -hmm. and I see 78, 78. on you. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm twice as old as a kid, you know. But this kid right here, mark my words. Now, and I said this earlier in the season, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, and I'm not saying that because you hear it. I, I see him every day in practice. I'm going to slide him a couple hundred dollars after. That's I see him every day in practice. I see how this kid works. I see how he after practice, how he's still in the gym before practice. I know he goes to Pacific Palisades and shoots in their gym <laughs> after school. He is just a tremendous talent. One of the things I want to ask Kobe before we even take off uh, and, and do the thing that we're going to do is, has it been everything that you thought it was going to be? And then some. And then some. I mean, I, I really look forward to the challenge of playing against the best basketball players in the world. That's something I really look forward to. I knew that night in and night out, players were going to attack. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really mm -hmm. looking forward to that challenge, offensively and defensively. Right. Right. Yeah, so it's been everything's made up to me.